Well, this is a much bigger map than you saw in the last lecture. In that lecture, I stayed in the south-central portion of the map, the Cyclades Islands, Crete and Mycenae in the Peloponnesian Peninsula, or southern Greece. But greater Greece, or Greek art and culture, extended to what is modern-day Sicily and Turkey. So, for example, the famous Greek scientist Archimedes lived out his life in Syracuse on the eastern coast of Sicily. And when we get to Greek architecture, we'll spend quite a bit of time looking at Pergamon, which is to the south and west of the Asia Minor label on this map, in other words, in what would be modern-day Turkey. Uh, in the Hellenistic period, Greece is ruled by the Macedonians. You'll notice that uh, in the central northern part of the map. So when I say Greek, I mean the Greek world, not just mainland Greece or Athens. And in fact, many of the best preserved Greek ruins are actually in Sicily and Turkey, both places I visited, and I would encourage you to do the same. Okay, this is really going to be a race through Greek history. I promise we're going to go back and look at these periods in detail, and we're going to look at them in terms of first sculpture, then architecture, and then painting. But I want to try to give you some quick overview. This should be, I hope, something of a review from ancient Civ. On the other hand, that was a long time ago, right? So at any rate, I've already talked about the Minoan and Mycenaean uh, cultures in Greece and noted that they produced very different architecture and art. The Minoans built palaces as befit what appears to have been a pretty fun-loving, spirited culture, and one, intriguingly, in which women uh, seem to have played a more leading role. The Mycenaeans, on the other hand, built fortresses and appear to have had a warrior culture. Why these civilizations disappeared is actually the subject of a lot of historical dispute. They may have been destroyed by a huge volcano that we know rocked the Aegean around 1400 BCE uh, and may also be the origin of the story of the lost continent of Atlantis. Uh, on the other hand, the decline may have come with the invasion of Dorians for the north or some combination of both. Uh, at any rate... Uh, the civilized Greek world fell apart and was replaced by what historians usually refer to as a dark ages that lasted around 400 years. Uh, for our art history purposes, the geometric and orientalizing periods fall into the later part of these dark years. So do Homer's great tales, the Iliad and the Odyssey. They were, uh, they, they're describing the Mycenaean era, so they're earlier, uh, but they were written down during the later part of this period. Uh, and the values honored in Homer's stories would continue to dominate Greek culture, just like the stories would continue to dominate Greek drama really throughout the period we'll be studying. So these are values such as physical prowess, athleticism, as well as warrior strength, courage, protection of family and the community, personal honor. Uh, in other words, uh, something close to worship of what's called aret, A-R-E-T-E, -E, or individual manliness as exhibited by the warrior athlete. My apologies, ladies, but manliness is, in fact, how the Greeks would have termed it. Okay, Greece emerged from the Dark Ages with the development of the city-state or polis, uh, the term is almost always, in fact, translated city-state, but actually, originally, it referred to a citadel, an elevated, defensible hill uh, such as the Acropolis in Athens, around which first towns and then cities were built. Uh, later, these communities would add an agora or marketplace and civic center and other areas for essentially public discourse. This period, which is called Archaic Greece in your textbook in an art history, uh, also saw the expansion of Greece west of Sicily and east into Asia Minor. I already mentioned that. And for our purposes, this is very important, the rise of Athens, both as a commercial power and as a kind of fledgling democracy. This isn't the place to talk about the complex political developments in Athens, but it was indeed developing a political system unlike anything else that had been seen in the world. Keep in mind, though, that Athens was only one of many Greek polae. That's the plural of polis. You just saw that in your quiz. And initially, uh, it was not the most powerful. The most powerful army, in fact, through almost all this period, will be the army of Sparta. Athens eventually develops the most powerful navy. 
This period comes to its first climax when the Ionians, that is the Greek settlers in Asia Minor, that was Ionia, what's now Turkey, rebelled against their Persian rulers. This is the period when Persia basically ruled the Near East. Persepolis was the capital, remember? Athens defended these Ionian rebels for a variety of reasons that I wish I had time to discuss, but really don't. Persia responded with an invasion, uh, which was repelled at the famous Battle of Marathon. Then they invaded again in an even bigger way uh, and, in fact, burned Athens. But the Greeks, against enormous odds, and in part because the most of the city-states finally, and I would add temporarily, united under Athens, they held off the per- Persians at the famous ba- Battle of Thermopylae, where, in fact, the Spartans were the heroes. Then they defeated the Persian navy at the Battle of Salamis and the Persian army at the Battle of Plataea. You do not, you'll be pleased to know, have to remember those battles. But you do need to know that it was this really amazing victory against Persia that ushered in Athens' golden age, or in art history, Greeks' classical age. Uh, The Persian Wars left Athens the dominant polis in the Greek world and the leader of the Delian League of Pole. Now, the Delian League was initially supposed to be a voluntary league of the city-states that had fought off Persia, uh, but it pretty quickly became, in effect, an Athenian empire. So this was the height of Athenian power. And you'll notice that the art of this period is, it's kind of, it has a kind of official note to it. It's triumphalist. And I think to our eyes, it's also perhaps a little stiff, at least in comparison with some of the sculpture we're going to see next. Uh, the Athenian Empire, a.k.a. the Delian League, uh, became increasingly unpopular with other Greek city-states, uh, especially when Athens began to exact high taxes in the form of tribute. So discontented Pole began to line up with Athens' traditional adversary, the powerful Sparta, and eventually, there are the great, there's the Great Peloponnesian War. There are actually a series of Peloponnesian Wars, but this is the one that really matters. And eventually, Athens is defeated. By the way, I haven't reviewed the dates. They're there on your slides. Uh, I'm going to give you, as part of the test review, the dates for that I want you to remember the sort of central dates for the artistic period. But in this lecture, I'm trying to kind of put all this into historical perspective. Note, by the way, that the dates in the art tend to lag the dates of Greek events. Uh, Periclean Athens, for example, is Greece's golden age, but it takes a few years to construct a monument such as the Parthenon. Uh, And by then, as I've recounted, Athens is facing a new struggle for survival. The 4th century, and again, remember, that'll be the 300s, it's a little confusing, uh, is a difficult period for Athens and indeed for the Greek city-states. They're weakened by fighting among themselves. They continue to struggle with Athens' Delian League. Uh, And in this period, basically, philosophy and art, drama, Greek society in general, become less confident. Uh, Philosophy and art turn inward. Drama begins to focus more on family relations and emotions, and less on, you know, sort of huge heroic tales of warfare. Uh, The art focuses more on individual happiness, morality, less on community and the polis. Again, we'll talk about all this more, but I'm trying to give you an overview. And you'll notice these statues are more individualized, more emotional, more, yes, erotic, and I would also say less triumphant than the earlier age. So the classical period climaxed and then ended with King Philip of Macedon's invasion and conquest of Greece, uh, which he unifies under now kingly rather than city-state rule, and then his son Alexander the Great's conquest of much of the known world. He gets all the way to India before he dies uh, very young at the age of 33. Uh, The mosaic here, by the way, depicts Alexander's victory over Darius III. I would guess if you ran into this on the AP test, you'd be more likely to be asked about it in the terms of its historical depiction, but it is a significant work of art in that it's a pebble mosaic. We'll talk about that again. Uh, Whoops. Uh, In the period that followed Alexander's death, his kingdom was divided between three of his generals. Uh, During this time, Greek culture spread around the Mediterranean and Greek society grew richer and more cosmopolitan and, frankly, more self-absorbed. 
And then finally, in 146 BCE, Greece became a Roman province, but in some ways, this actually represented Greece's uh, conquering of the world because the Romans deeply admired all things Greek. This is actually a Roman copy of a famous Greek sculpture, and it's one that we'll be talking about in detail, uh, not in the next lecture, but in the one after that. So on to Greek sculpture.